Double J, Jeff Jarrett here to tell you about SaveWithConrad.com. You've heard Conrad talk about the total nonstop savings they've provided current homeowners. But did you know Conrad and his team can also help my world listeners become homeowners? They make buying a home easier than getting the bag after a good housekeeping match. But don't take the last outlaw's word for it. Franklin Dove, Orlando, Florida. After listening to all of Conrad's podcasts and hearing the different stories that he shared, I felt the time was right for me to explore buying a home again and uh, reached out. And one thing led to another and finally closed last week. It was excellent. Uh, Everything flowed smoothly from my first contact. I just put in the initial request online. Francis reached out. We started the application process, got the approval moving. Holly was great. Larry Thompson was amazing. Everything was smooth. Communication was perfect. Really, it was a, a much better experience than anything that I could have imagined. My name is Franklin Dove in Orlando, Florida, and I got into my dream home thanks to SaveWithConrad.com. That's right. In my world, it doesn't get any better than five stars. Don't let your landlord get over on you. Walk out on that bad deal and stop throwing your money away on rent today with SaveWithConrad.com. That's right. It's SaveWithConrad.com. And MLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone, Andrew Ryan, Jeff Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Rocket Promotions. Tony and Friends North, they win. Look, Shivani's back again. World title split off center stage. Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro. New World Order and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinnie Mac, Simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad. Not your classy podcast. Watch a long try not to laugh. Lowest rules can't pass. This wasn't the initial plan. Tom Ziggs, a good looking man. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Well, Conrad, for a jabroni, I'm pretty damn good. How you doing? Wow, a jabroni. Look at you. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you using these words because The Rock came back on SmackDown or just a random coincidence? Don't even know The Rock came back on SmackDown, so probably I'm using it because that's what I am. Well, there you go. Uh, not only did the rock come back on SmackDown, Alabama managed to win a game. Wasn't sure that would ever happen again after Texas, but they yeah. barely beat South Florida and you see Mario celebrating in the background. Yeah. Uh, hey. it looked like the Georgia Bulldogs picked up and over the win over the weekend and somehow, some way Colorado pulled it off and they beat Colorado state. Uh, it looked like, um, a hip hop award on the sidelines. They had guys like offset over there and the rock was there. I mean, it's a who's who on the sidelines for Colorado and Deion Sanders these days, but I am curious. Do you think it can continue? Tony, he's got Oregon and he's got USC on deck. What would you predict? Uh, Deion Sanders next two games look like. With I, I think they're going to win the national championship. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I mean, if you turn on ESPN, that they've already won it. So, uh, yeah. Well, I see. Okay. And, you know, I, uh, I don't give a flying flip about college football anymore. Wow. Okay. I really don't. I, I was with the dogs for, holy shit, 18 years. No, 15 years. And I, um, I enjoyed every bit of the moment. I. But I'm telling you, Conrad, I'm the type, I really am the type that, and I, and I think my 18 years from wrestling kind of illustrated that, that when I walk away, you're, from, done, you're done, I'm done. I'm done. I walk away cold Turkey. I, I tried to, when the uh, major league baseball season started, I tried to buy MLB, uh, the MLB package, a month, to month thing. 
about the first month in April, I watched like three Yankee games and I just, I canceled my subscription. I just, I, I, I was bored by baseball and the only thing I do with college football now is, is I check the scoreboard on my phone on Sunday. Don't follow the games at all. And so don't give a shit. Sorry. Wow. Way I am. Way I am. It's not, it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with, well, it has a little bit to do with the sport. I think college football is run amok with money now. And, uh, like wrestling, you mean? Yeah. But, but I mean, on a bigger scale, my God. How much money is in college football now? Holy smokes. And but it makes it, you mad that people are doing well financially or no, it just kind of, kind of makes me mad that it's a, it's kind of become a professional sport without being a pro. I'm glad that kids are making money now. I really am because I often thought that these schools are just raking in the dough Yep. and the kids are getting nothing well, now they're getting money and, and I think it's good, but it just seems to me, it just, I don't know. So anyway, that's not the reason, but the reason is I just don't care. I really don't care. I started watching the NFL this year. I watched two Jags games. I'm going to go to a couple of them. Mm. I, have, I have a vested interest in the Jacksonville Jaguars, not only because I work for the Con family, but because I've made some very good friends with people in the front office there, in the Jags front office. And uh, one of them, uh, you may know his name, is Mike Perkins. Okay. Wow. How about that? And his father was Ray Perkins. How about Absolutely. That? Yeah. He's the, he's in charge of, of the, uh, I don't know what the exact uh, term is, but he's in charge of the video crew. Um, that goes out and, and shoots the games for, you know, for, for the team to watch. Um, and I went through their new practice facility, which is unbelievable. The money they put in that practice facility. Doesn't that just piss you off though, that, you know, there's so much money in professional football like that. No, not really. That pisses me off. Really? Just so much money. Yeah. I mean, like, look at Joe Burrow, highest paid player in NFL history. Now. Yeah. Loses his first two games. Yeah. Well, many Super Bowl champions have gone on to lose games. So season's not over yet, dude. That's all I got. Hey, he, or, won, uh, he, he won a Super Bowl. No, I, I no, 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 no. I said you can lose two games and still win a Super Bowl. Oh, oh, okay. Well, we'll see how that works yeah, out. We'll, we'll see how it works out. Right. Yeah, yeah. But but according to ESPN, the Cowboys have already won the Super Bowl. So the Colorado's well, they win every year, don't they? What's that? The Cowboys win it on ESPN every year, don't they? Yeah, they do. I think so. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, that's another thing that that has turned me off from sports. What's that? I, I, I cannot watch a sports center. Jesus. I cannot watch. I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble watching like, uh, the NFL pregame shows. Although the one on Fox with Terry Bradshaw is still the best one and Howie long and the, that crew, but it's just like these, these announcers now just make it about themselves. And it's, they're, they're character driven now. Yeah. Yeah. And of course with, you know, as, as a wrestling announcer, I was always told, you know, you make it about the wrestlers and the action and not about yourself. And you think Gordon Sully ever scissored somebody right in the middle of the ring? Don't think so. Okay. No. Good old days. You know, nothing stays the same. Everything nothing changes. stays the same. Everything changes. Hey, do we have a group watching us with today? Yeah. The group is Dave Silva. Oh, so the, the answer is no. Also, we do have a group uh, who watch um, the book over on adfreeshows.com. And I had the privilege last week, Tony, of sitting down with our great close personal friend, Mr. David Crockett, to record not one, but two episodes. And man, we've covered a lot of really cool stuff, uh, yeah. things I didn't really expect. We covered August and September of 1985. Now, in July, man, they set all kinds of records. We'll talk about July in a moment, but. In August, we went to the NWA convention huh. and we took 18 wrestlers with us. And we did that to encourage everyone to not only book the world champion, like they always had, but to let them know there's a new set of rules in town. If you want the champ to come work your show, 
we're going to send you the top 50% of your card because we're going to stop running so many local territory spot shows ourselves and send folks to you. And we're going to split the gate 50, 50. Wow. And some of those promoters were excited about the opportunity and some were not. Wow. When we fast forwarded to September, we got to see how it happened when they worked two shows inside of the Jarrett territory, teasing that Jerry Lawler might become the NWA champion. Of course, we know that didn't happen. We had a battle of the belt super show down in Florida. We had the uh, incredible super clash that had a huge falling out with Vern Gagne and, and, and Jim Crockett. Mm -hmm. We also had heard about the big blow up that happened at the Hawaii show. So many really cool little fun facts. And of course, as we wind down the month of September, that's where we have arguably the hottest angle of all time where Ric Flair, Arn and Ole put hard times on the American dream at the Omni, a really fantastic couple of shows that we put in the can, but I wanted to play a clip for you today, Tony yeah. from July, where David actually talked about the very first great American bash long before there was a tour in 1986, there had to be a first and it happened in Charlotte just around the 4th of July, right? 1985. Yep. What a super fun story. Let's take a look at uh, what David Crockett had to say. But without this first show, I don't know that we would have just immediately said, let's go run a bunch of tours and do the same thing all over the country in different stadiums. This was like proof of concept of this whole idea, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, you especially understand that, you know, you, you try something, you have to try it at least once and yes. if it works, okay. But you know, let's see if we can take this concept and tweak it and take it other places. And the, the concept definitely worked in Charlotte. Definitely. Uh, you could <laughs> look at how many fans and look at the gate. It was an all time record as far as uh, attendance and gate for Jim Crockett promotions at that time, uh, catch the book each month, plus thousands of hours of other bonus content and do it now with a special offer courtesy of us here at WHW new subscribers will save 20% off their first month by going to Tony save 20.com. That's Tony save 20.com. You'll get 20% off your very first month right now. And what's interesting is Tony, as we've talked about you know, that NWA convention, one of the promoters who were actually there in August of 85 was Don Owen. And he actually did a couple of shows with uh, the Crockett's in September. He liked this idea. And then they drew huge money out there. And Don Owen, I have to admit, was sort of a blind spot for me. Like I'd heard about Portland and certainly your old pal MJF talks about Piper in Portland quite a bit. Right. We all know that, that Roddy Piper held Don Owen in such high regard, but I have to admit, I've never actually sat down and dedicated a bunch of time to watching it. Now I've seen some clips and highlights back when I was a tape trader, you know, there would be a, a match here or there that was a compilation, but today we're going to change all that. Aren't we Tony? Yeah, we are going to take a look, go back and take a look at Portland wrestling today. And this, uh, this is kind of based on, I was just bored and was scouring YouTube taking a look at old wrestling because I really, really love old wrestling. I saw the final episode of Portland wrestling. We're not going to watch that, but we are going to watch an episode of Portland wrestling together. Uh, and uh, again, this Portland was kind of obscure. I, I, I told, I may have told you the story that I did talk to Don Owen one time and, um, I got him on the phone for Jimmy. I, and I said, Mr. Owens, how you doing? He said, well, not too good. I said, Oh, I'm sorry. He said, yeah, pretty soon I'm going to have to start selling some of my, off my herd of cattle to be able to pay these wrestlers. Don't know what time that was. That obviously is when I started working in the office. So it had to be like mid eighties. That was the only talk I had with him, but, uh, obviously he and Jimmy worked out something. And when you think about it, they were way up and out in the West and were really out of the mainstream, but like Piper, a lot of stars did work there. So it was very interesting. It is going to be a fun time. You know, I've never watched it before. What we've got is an old episode, uh, from way back when I think this is from 1982. Whoa. And what's going to, what's going to be fun about this one is we do have 
uh, well, it's going to become the, uh, the touring NWA champion who works a gate split for Jim Crockett. Once upon a time, mm-hmm. Rick Flair is going to be on this show. We've also got the rock's dad. Rocky Johnson will be here. Wow. We've got a very young Kurt Henning and his dad, Larry Henning playboy, buddy Rose, who I actually just fired up over the weekend to show Cassio kid, his blow away diet. Uh, we've got dizzy Hogan. Yeah, that's what you think it is. Taking on King Parsons. We've also got Chung Lee. And how about this? We've got Stan the Man Stasiak. Oh, the hard punch. Poland. So lots of fun stuff that we don't normally see. Uh, and before we get going today, I want to give you a heads up. Okay. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? I did know that. Like acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. And here's the deal it's just gross. Well, Miracle Maid offers a whole line of self cleaning, eco friendly bedding like sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and they require three times less laundry. We should also mention that these sheets are infused with silver. So we've got silver infused fabrics here that have been inspired by NASA. And what that does, not only is it much cleaner and prevents 99.7% of bacterial growth. But it also makes them thermoregulating. Yeah, you see, these sheets are designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you're going to get better sleep, and there's no more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. And I think they feel as nice, if not nicer, than the sheets I've seen in a five-star hotel, but without the five-star price. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, cause breakouts and acne. Just sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash WHW. That's trymiracle.com slash WHW to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo WHW at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. By the way, Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash WHW and use the code WHW to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash WHW to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring today's episode. Tony, I'm excited, man. I love watching old wrestling with you, and this is something I've never seen before. How many episodes of Portland wrestling do you think you've seen in your life? Zero. I don't even know who the, the commentators are. So maybe, okay. we'll, maybe we'll find some uh, new commentators we haven't heard, or maybe some that we have heard, uh, that it started in Portland. So we'll see. Well, I'm excited to check it out. Of course, when we talk about Portland, we should mention that, uh, Pacific Northwest wrestling or PNW, those would be the initials. Uh, and I guess, uh, Herb Owen was the promoter from 25 to 42. And then Don Owen, who we've all heard so much about, ran the territory from 42 to 92. So wow. uh, this will be uh, interesting to see what's happening and, and and how this works, because you and I have never seen it before. So thank you guys for tuning along in with us. It's WHW on YouTube.com. And as I understand it, Silva's ready to roll that beautiful bean footage in three, two, one, play. Oh, we're starting with commercials, Tony. Morning movie. Hello, Rob. Winning Hello. list of standard features. Jump the pump with Subaru staying power. Suggested retail prices from fifty-two seventy-nine. Oh, Steve wow. Lee's Emran Oswald, Rockwood, Star Greg, for fifty-two hundred dollars. Jake Hanna and Thornley. Winning buys on Subaru. Inexpensive and built to stay that way. Portland Sports Arena. This is Portland Wrestling. <laughs> That's old school. Right by Mark Ford, where you're number one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And by Tom Peterson, who wishes you a very happy Easter this weekend from Southeast 82nd and Foster Road. Well, once again, a great Saturday evening to you all. I don't know if you can tell in the background yet, but we have got them loaded to the rafters at the sports arena tonight. The world champ is here, of course. 
We've got some other surprises for you. And as I've been telling you the last couple of Saturdays, the last three or four Saturdays, that something in the air, something ultra exciting. I tell you, it's a big one here. Hack Sawyer, just 21 years old, getting his shot at the world champion. Whether we get that on TV or not, we will just have to wait and see. But before we get anything done, let's hear from one of the men makes our show possible, talking about Marv Tonkin. Speaking for him, here's Alan Tonkin from Marv Tonkin Ford. Hi, I'm Jeff Gilbertson from Marv Tonkin Ford. Al Tong is running a little bit late. This is my big chance. I'm not going to blow it. If you're looking for a good used car priced under $1,000 to $2,000, remember, budget priced used cars are especially at Fort Stark, the last chance to buy a car before you head over the mountain. Here are just a few examples from our current inventory. How about this 1968 Plymouth Fury two-door hardtop with a V8, automatic, and power steering? $1095 might be a good price. We had it at $650, but tomorrow it's priced at only $495. Holy Here's shit. a great 1974 <laughs> Mustang three-door with V6, four-speed, and mag wheels. Some places might price it as high as $2395, but this weekend at Fort Stark, our price is just $1695. And check out this 1970 Ford LTD Squire Wagon. You might Not find the price as high as eighteen ninety five on some lots, but the Fort Stark price is only six ninety five. First Jesus. come, first please. And if you're looking for a good work truck, come out and take a look at this nineteen seventy F one hundred with V eight and automatic. A lot of lots might want as much as eighteen hundred dollars, but our price tomorrow morning will be just eight ninety five. Remember, these are only a few examples. We've got scores to choose from right now, and that's at Fort Stark. The last chance to buy a car Easter before you head over the mountain, Easter located at 12345 Easter Southeast Easter Stark. Basket Easter Basket. From who? I don't know who it's from. I'm from. just supposed to ask you a riddle. Yes? What kind of person has missed out on the great buys at Fort Stark this weekend? What kind of person? I have no idea. An egghead. Oh. Egghead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Finally. Alan. Fitting revenge. That's Fort Stark. Last chance to buy a car before you get over the mountain. That's egg on your face. Dutch Savage for well-planned insurance. Oh. Three things you need for your car. You have to fuel it, you have to keep it maintained, and you have to insure it. The fuel and the maintenance are easy, but sometimes it's hard to find reasonably priced car insurance. This if is great shit, man. You, call Well-Planned Insurance. They specialize in solving car insurance problems. You'll probably save money at Well-Planned, and you can use their easy monthly payment plan. Well-Planned Insurance. Solving wow. car insurance problems for over 25 years. That's a wrestler, call boys and girls. nearest you for a free quote. That's savage. We're going to have a little surprise for the first match. Our young man spending a little time in the Northwest. A full house crowd at the Portland Sports Arena. Here to see the world champion and maybe see that title change hands. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The first event this evening will be one fall. Introducing in this corner. That's Don Owens, isn't Brown, it? The ring announcer. City, I believe. Stasiak. His opponent in this corner, 235 pounds from the Hawaiian Islands, just back from a long tour of the East Coast, Jimmy Afe. Referee Sandy Bar. Wow. Hey, Conrad, uh, the, the crowd's pretty hot here. Dude, they're, they're all into yeah. Jimmy Afe. Yeah. Look at Stasiak, man. Those chops on the side. Jimmy Afey, as you might imagine, trained by Peter Maivia. Okay. No surprise there. And the referee looked like he just, uh, was going to go shopping at the mall, but decided to come in a referee instead. I mean, what do you, what do you make of that shirt? He's sporting there. Just put a shirt on kid, get out there and, and call the match. Stan, the man Stasiak. Yeah. Years after his run in New York, here we are in the early eighties, 1982. Man, he looks like a, a villain in a, I mean, he's McFly. He looks like he's, he's Biff's dad. Yeah. He was, uh, known for obviously the, the hard punch, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, some, some very interesting stuff. I, I'm blown away by the price of the cars. If anyone wanted to collect cars, my gosh, that was the time to do it. If you had the, the money, right. You could have collected oh, a bunch good. of cars and 500 bucks. Yeah. And now think about it now, how many years later, 40 years later, right? Yeah. Those things would be worth some money if you took oh, care sure. of them. 
Yeah. Sure. What investment they would have been. How about the old school commercial too? I mean, they clearly brought those old cars. Some of them are 20 year old cars mm -hmm. and they're in the studio. They drove them inside the studio, had the big yeah. curtain behind it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the production and the effort that they went into there, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy. Cause I guess back then it wasn't just easy to just send a camera out. It was easier to right. have them come in as crazy as that sounds. Yeah. I like how they just, just, uh, it just shows you how wrestling changed. I mean, you obviously, I don't need to tell you guys this because you can see it and hear how wrestling has changed the presentation of it. Yeah. How they come back and the referee's not even in the ring and. Uh, there's no big entrance or they just guys stepping through the ropes, no big entrance, no music, no video font or Chiron as it were to identify the wrestlers or anything like that. Um, and, and a, a very subdued, I would call it announcer as well. Yes. He, he was a good announcer, but he didn't seem excited about the card. <laughs> he said, so the world champion is here. We hope we have time to put him on TV. It's yes. Like, really? <laughs> in the days we would say, the nature boy, Ric Flair is here and he'll be coming up. Don't go anywhere. Shit in like in a weird way, David Crockett was the secret sauce in that regard. Yeah. I mean, right. I think you get so excited. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, you know, the Gordon Sully's, they would never do it like that. No, not at all. You're right. D David Maybe Crockett set the, the standard. Fandom, though, that's David, dude. Yeah, that's right. He set the standard, didn't he? Yeah. How much fun is he having just hanging around wrestling again too? He's yeah, just a good dude. I'm so glad he's doing stuff. It's one of the real good stories now. It really is of what you've been doing here, bringing David back. It's one of the great stories. He's having so much fun and yeah. we're blessed to have him. Man, we got a lot of great matches on this card, Tony. We've, we're going to see a Rocky Johnson interview after this. Wow. Then we will see Ric Flair in a wrestling match against Brett Sawyer. Wow. I think they called him Hack Sawyer. Yeah. Uh, we'll have uh, the Henning interview, a Playboy interview, Ric Flair interview, Dizzy Hogan. What's your favorite Dizzy Hogan match? Uh, it's going to be coming up. I've heard so much about it. That's why we're rolling tape on this one. You know who Dizzy Hogan is, right? That's Hulk, isn't it? That's Brutus the Barber fucking Beefcake. Oh, really? We're going to see him wrestle as Dizzy Hogan. Oh, my God. I'm kind of pumped about it. I'll be honest. I am so excited. We stumbled onto this, man. This is, uh, the way professional wrestling used to be the good old stuff. Yeah. And I hope everybody goes out of their way to check some of that out. You know, listen, there's plenty of criticism to go around for current wrestling. If you want to get frustrated, just log into social media, but I would say, <laughs> Hey, let's it's okay to go back and remember why you became a fan and watch the stuff you grew up on. And it's even cooler sometimes to go back and watch the old stuff. And, uh, see sort of, you know, how we got here. Well, I'm all about the old stuff because I'm old yeah. and, 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 and I love watching stuff, stuff wrestling that I've never seen before. That's why I really enjoy watching the, the WWE from the 18 years that I was gone mm. because you know, I've heard so much about this guy did this and this guy did that and. I, and I, I even would like to go back and watch some ring of honor stuff because we have a lot of guys who, who are in ring of honor. Right. And are Let's now, do that. I've yeah. got a fun show or two in mind. We'll make sure we get some old school ring of honor. I just hope the, uh, I hope the it's, it's worth it for, uh, our fans on a large scale. I, I know fans love the, the modern stuff and, and I get that, but, uh, well, I mean, the modern stuff is easy to follow because it's on TV every week. Right. Hey, I, I did want to ask you, speaking of modern stuff, have you had a chance to see any of the wrestlers on Netflix yet? No. Oh, dude, you should go out of your way to see it. Is that OVW? Really, it is, but it's not, I mean, it is about OVW, but it's so well done that non-wrestling people could get into it. Like I haven't recommended it to my mom yet only because I haven't seen her, but I plan to. My mom is not a wrestling fan. She's not interested in wrestling fan uh, in being a wrestling fan, but the human interest behind, you know, sports, like the real story behind the story is, as Jeff Jarrett likes to say, yeah. that's what she loves. So she likes shows like hard knocks where you're following an NFL team in the preseason, but she doesn't actually want to, you know, watch a preseason football game. 
but the actual story about these characters is what she's into. Like they're real life people. And I think she would absolutely love the wrestlers. I think you would too. It's that they did a fabulous job putting it together. Uh, I think it's seven episodes, whatever it is. It's, it's worth a watch. I binged it over the weekend. Couldn't get enough of it. Really good. Okay. stuff. Good. I'm not, uh, I'm not big into reality stuff. As you know, I just, uh, it's not a reality show. It's a documentary. Okay. So, I mean, if you, if you like documentaries, you'll like it. I'm not, I it's, do. Not, it's not like big brother. You know what yeah. I mean? I do like documentaries. I really do. And there's so many documentaries out there. Most of them are about murders. I hate that. <laughs> I do too. That's what Megan loves that stuff though. Somebody's getting stabbed. Yeah. She's in somebody's it. Getting shot. Somebody's yeah. getting robbed. Right. She wants to watch it. Look at, uh, Stasiak cell for this kid. What? <laughs> He rolled out on the floor and then fell down on the floor. It's interesting to see everybody's, you know, just the approach to production and how it's different. Yeah. You know, we've seen some, some of our old mid Atlantic stuff. We've seen some old WWF stuff but to see their approach here. I think now I want to watch a little bit more of it, but I think what we got here basically is a two camera shoot. It looks like it to me. Yeah. This camera. They're both, you know, they're both on the same side of the ring and they'll go to this camera and then they'll, they'll widen out to the other camera. Like right there, there's the second shot. So I think those are the only two cameras they got. I mean, as I understand it, all wrestling was a two camera shoot until world-class. Is that not right? Don't know the answer to that, but that might be right because I've heard that, you know, Keith Mitchell and his group were the one that really set the standard for. And of course, you know, we started doing uh wrestling and we had our own truck in the eighties and I remember that oh shit, they just they just disqualified Stasiak. Let's track it. All you folks out there I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen yeah. or a pencil. I'll mention that next Saturday night, Mitch <laughs> Mitchell. Guy goes 250 or more, comes out of Mississippi, a wild man who claims he can run all the wrestlers out of the Northwest. That's Mitch Mitchell. will be making his debut next Saturday night. And then in May, watch for Dutch Schultz, 265 pounder that uh, I understand really gives out some trouble. We'll take a quick look. Hold it up a photo. And Dave Schultz calls himself Dr. D once in a while, probably My gosh. for destruction. We'll have to wait and see when he gets here. All right, if we're ready, here's where action is all this week. And going into a week from tomorrow, the world champion on all this. these cards, to my knowledge. <laughs> Finley over near the Tri Cities in Oregon. Monday, Super Card at the College there in Longview. Dude, this is Tickets awesome. to the locker room next Tuesday, a special card here in Portland at Sports Arena. Wednesday, the Super Shootout. They've got about three main events down there Wednesday in Seattle. Thursday in Salem at South Salem High School. The champ is going to defend his title against Rocky Johnson. Friday in Eugene, Rocky gets a shot of he doesn't take it Thursday. I know Elton Owen's got a big one down there. Ric Flair and all those cards, remember, a heavyweight champion of the world. And a quick reminder now, anybody who beats Flair picks up the champ's schedule for a period of about a month so that uh, you're guaranteed if we say the world champion's going to be there, he is going to be there. And Ric Flair, if he loses the title, uh, agrees to meet two weeks of bookings. So you know you're going to see the world champion, even if it isn't Ric Flair. And if Ric Flair is defeated, you know you're going to see him. In most cases, he would get a rematch the next night against whoever took the title away from him. That is okay. just the traditional way of doing it. But you can rest assured okay. that you'll see him, whether he's still a heavyweight champion or not. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short time out and hear from one of our sponsors and i have no one nearly telling me nobody special well i'm sure they're special because but nobody regular how about that we'll be right back 
So there's a timeout. I love that throw to a spot. We're going to press pause. We want to hear all those commercials. But Tony, I could, I could see you sort of making a face when he's running through. Now, don't worry if the title changes hands. Okay. I, I liked that. I thought that was logical. That overcame the objection of, well, I don't want to buy a ticket if I'm not going to see Flair. Yeah, I, I that's logical too, but I was just kind of confused the way he was explaining it. I don't think he did a good job of explaining it. So. How about that throw to a commercial? I don't. Yeah. I guess they're nobody special. Well, they're special. They're just not regular. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> well, something that's special and old school and regular for you and I is our fabulous razors from Henson Shaving. We absolutely love this product. It's as old school as old school Portland wrestling, but with all the benefits of new school tech, we just love Henson Shaving, much like Portland. It was a family owned business, man. You see, these cats originally started out as an aerospace parts manufacturer. Yeah, you heard me. They've made stuff for the International Space Station and the Mars Rover, but they've decided to Let's fire those aerospace grade CNC machines up and make the thinnest razors you've ever seen. 0. 0.0013 inches. Yeah, that's how thick. And I know what you're saying to yourself, self, how thick is that? Well, it's thinner than a human hair. It's unbelievable. It means a more stable and secure blade that gives you a vibration free shave. No more nicks, no more cuts, no more scrapes. And it also has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream that makes clogging virtually impossible. You see, a Henson razor feels like something your handsome ass grandfather used to use. It's an old school feel. It uses a standard dual edge blade, but there's nothing standard when they're thinner than you've ever seen. 0. 0.0013 inches. What I like best about these guys is they've managed to crack the code. You see, normally when something's better, it costs more money. We're all familiar with that. But in this case, not only is it better, it's also more affordable. There's no gimmicks needed here, man. There's no plastic, there's no subscriptions, there's no proprietary blades, there's no planned obsolescence. Just the best razor you've ever had. Gives you that old school feel with all the benefits of the new school tech. And it's also more affordable. How affordable? Down at the drugstore, they keep all those cartridges for those other plastic blades in lock and key because they're the most expensive thing in the doggone drugstore. Here though, it's just three to $5. Not three to five dollars a week, not three to five dollars a month, not three to five dollars a quarter, three to five dollars a year. Seriously, it's the most affordable razor and the best razor you've ever had. Let's say no to subscriptions. Let's say yes to a razor that will last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash WHW to pick the razor for you and use the code WHW and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just be sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades. When you head to H E N S O N S H A V I N G dot com slash W H W and use the code W H W. Tony, we've got some more fabulous commercials from Portland here. Let's roll that playback here in three, two, one, play. Was your divorce final last year? Yes, it was. Did you receive alimony? Yes, I did. Did you have unemployment? At most national tax firms, when you speak, everyone listens. Simpler Complex Columbia Bookkeeping and Tax Service has private rooms, competitive fees, and similar guarantees to national firms. Why settle for less? Columbia Bookkeeping is locally owned in Portland, Beaverton, and Vancouver. Artisans? Well, they've been around these parts a long time. It's the artesian brewing water that makes Olympia beer taste so darn good. Now, there ain't nobody ever see the artesian because they keep to themselves. But sometime late at night, you call them, they'll answer you. Hello? Hello? My goodness. It's their water. I think, it's, I think that was Dub Taylor. We're back. Well, Dutch Savage seemed to have gotten something in his eye. Taking his place, we're going to talk a little wrestling with Rocky Johnson. I ain't taking his place. I'm just doing the man a favor. He asked me to get out here because he's got a severe eye injury. He asked me to get out here and tell the people where we're wrestling on that next week. As you know, tomorrow night, Frank, we in Finley. Monday, we in Longview. Tuesday, we got a Portland special here. Wednesday, we're in Seattle. Thursday, we in Salem. Friday, Friday's my night. I'm going to tell you why. I got my chance. That's a world champion. El Nones went and 
give me a contract that I can face the world champion Friday night and Eugene, don't, I don't know who the world champion is going to be. He might lose the title by then. I don't know. But all I know, Daddy, is that I got the chance to become the world champion Friday night, right, and Eugene. And then Saturday, we're back here in Portland, Frank. Right. And a big one Tuesday here in Portland. We're going to talk more about that later. I want to thank you very much for coming up, Rock. Uh, congratulations on getting that shot, and the best of luck to you. Thank you, Frank. Hey, all I'm going to say this week, I'm going to be training and doing my best because this is my title shot right in Eugene, and I just want to thank Al Nones for giving it to me. And, brother, I ain't going to let anybody down. It's like it's always nice to talk to you, Frank. Thank you, Rock. Normally, the next generation of promo is not as Monday good. Night, Columbia College I can Gym. Taste Here, Portland, uh, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday in Seattle, Thursday, it's at South Salem High School. And I'll tell you, that's going to be a super one there. They've got a couple matches lined up. At Seattle, there's something else, I tell you. Friday in Eugene, next Saturday back at Portland. And at least through Friday, Rick Flair will be on all those, <laughs> title or not. We'll be right back. Ellen talking now for Marv, talking Ford. Oh, oh my gosh. Marv Talking Ford is proud to announce a new 5% cash assistance program from Ford on any new Mustang, Fairmont, Granada, Escort, or EXP, plus Ford Care coverage that covers almost everything but the gas for the first two years of 24,000 miles. But Marv Talking Ford does the competition better because we'll give you $2,000 off dealer window sticker on any new EXP or $1,000 off dealer window sticker for your old car and trade, even if you have to push, pull, or drag it in. And if you don't have a trade, well, we'll give you $500 off. Remember, that's only at Marv Talking Ford, where you are. Number one. A Jacobson Super Bagger owner is very smart. He knows its big bag holds three bushels. And yeah, it does. Fewer stops. Mine does too. He also knows once word gets out he owns a Jacobson. Do they? Does Jacobson still make mowers? So a Jacobson owner has to be I, I, more I, I, than I smart. Hey, hey, I heard you got a Jake. Jason. He has to be yeah, very they do. clever. Yeah. At Fred Meyer Lawn and Garden Centers in Yamhill Farm and Home Supply, Yamhill. Right now, if you're watching this and you're alone, lonely, oh. then keep watching because this is for you. What? Companions. Companions is the name of a group of professional people who do what the name says. What? Help you find a companion. Someone who shares your interests your likes and dislikes. What? We do this by matching your characteristics to those of someone who also is tired of being alone. Oh, God. How can strangers perform such a personal service? Does you take a friend? <laughs> someone you've known for a long while? What? Sometimes. But we do it by not getting emotionally involved. The emotions are left for you where they belong. Oh. Wow. Companions. When you're ready to break the invisible chain of loneliness, <laughs> all it costs is a phone call to find oh, out how. Escort Companions. service. <laughs> Freedom from loneliness. An escort the service. chain of loneliness. loneliness. Wrap yourself in at home, ladies and gentlemen. Something very, very rare. A world title defense seen on television. They're going to get theme music. Seldom. I, I. If ever on local television. Oh, here we go. I used to have that road. A battle for the heavyweight championship of the world. Look at that, will you? Nature boy, Ric Flair. And I tell you, that robe. Oh, a oh, sucker got to go $10,000. <laughs> Remember, they used to have three and four. I don't think they make those kind for that kind of money anymore. Don, on to do the introduction. There's Don. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for the sponsors of the wrestling card, you'd never get to see them on TV. So, at the request of our our very wonderful sponsors who make these programs possible that they asked me to, if we had a sell-off crowd to put the match on TV and we're going to break precedent and do this because usually the world champion never appears on a, on a television but because this was Ric Flair's first trip to the Pacific Post, he huh? okayed it tonight for the one and only time. So ladies and gentlemen, 
The first, this event will be the best two out of three falls, our one Whoa. hour time limit for the World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing here in this corner, 226 pounds from Florida, Hacksaw Sawyer. At this time, a big pleasure in introducing the World Heavyweight Champion, 240 pounds from Minneapolis, who has been one of the most sensational cards in the East for several years, Rick Flair. We can cut the audio now, but my Rose goodness, what an introduction by Don Owen and uh, Ric Flair in the old jungle robe and uh, two out of three falls, man. I like, he's saying this is his first trip to the, to the Pacific coast and the sponsors allowed it. This is as old school as it gets. Yeah. And the old school belt, yep. the, globe, the globe belt as well. Now, uh, Hacksaw Sawyer was known as Brett Wayne Sawyer in Georgia wrestling, brother of mad dog buzz sawyer i don't know i think that was legit right they were legit brothers you know i don't and, know the answer to that let me and, look that up i should know that and and we're announcement now who's who's in the corner here i don't yeah he is his brother yeah, yeah. i have a special announcement to make it's playboy buddy rose This Tuesday night, you got a Portland special. Now, I asked to wrestle Ric Flair for the World's Heavyweight Championship tonight, and Hack Sawyer got the shot. So, I would like to meet the winner of this match Tuesday night in the Portland Sports Arena. But, but, I'm going on record as to say this. If you win, I'll wrestle you, and if you win, I'll wrestle you, but... When I win that title Tuesday night, I will wrestle in Seattle, I'll wrestle in Salem, I'll wrestle in Eugene, I will make my home here, then I will go around the world and defend the title. But if I lose, if I lost that match Tuesday night, if I don't walk out of the ring with the World's Heavyweight Championship around my waist, I'll leave the Northwest. Listen to that. Got a pop on that, too. Let's see what Don Owen has to say. Uh-oh. Let on. me say one thing to you. Go home and start packing. If it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's one thing I didn't add to this. I would like to have my own referee. Ooh. Well, we will have to see what becomes of that. Right now, what do you think? We've got the I'm enjoying this. It's a uh, trip down memory lane for real. Yeah, it is. It, did I just imagine, or did we just see a commercial for prostitution? We did. We it saw felt like a prostitute commercial. It was an escort service. Yes. Yes. That's what it was. Did you ever start an escort service for all the right reasons? Set up shop at the top of four seasons. Oh, you mean like to, to get in my car and escort someone to the airport? So right. They would. That's what I meant. Yeah. No, never did do that. Yeah. If you've got like a package need to be delivered, like a heart or a kidney mm. that you escort them with your car, you know, with your flashers on, or as you've seen many times going down the interstate, a wide load and you see the cars escort them. Mm. Never thought about doing that. Hmm. But there, the there, now? there may be some money into it. Right. You, you never, I mean, you never know what people will pay for these days. Right. Well, I, I, Look I, at I, us. I they will pay for it. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Well, I just, um, no, were they uh, two out of three falls? How about that? You think they're going to show the whole match here on TV? How much time we got left in the show? Uh, I mean, we, we started with only 90 minutes. It's only a 90 minute show. Right. And I guess that's, I guess this is going to be the rest of the show. Who else would uh, you run down the list? Who else was on the show? Have we seen everybody on that list? Kurt and Larry Henning, Playboy okay. Blue Rose, Dizzy Hogan and King Parsons. All right. So it's Rock not going to go that far. Lee, and then another Flair Rose promo, I think. 
All right. <laughs> you know, you see Flair so much now on, on social media. Uh, I, I'm pretty, uh, I, I kind of stay active on Instagram with my dogs. That's about it. Right. Um, but, uh, sometimes I'll scroll through and I'll see a flare thing. It just makes me smile. Makes me smile that I'm not part of his family and you are. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, his uh, have you seen his mushroom energy drink? It's, it's in grocery stores, the Giant Eagle, like all over the country, and he got a few new sponsorships, like he's where the Cavs play, and it's pretty cool to see him growing a, a mushroom drink. I haven't tried it yet, but he says it'll get you all wired up. So, so it's like a, it's like obviously an energy drink. It is an energy drink, yeah. And I said, so does it taste like mushrooms? He goes, nope. I'm like, okay. I don't know, but I'm going to check it out. Hey, speaking of checking it out. Yeah. You and I love old school. We love nostalgia. Did you yep. ever catch any of winning time on HBO max? No, I see it a lot though. When I scroll through it's over. What do you mean? It's uh, I finished they... very abruptly last night as we're recording this. So this past Sunday night was the series finale. Uh huh. They covered through the end of the 84 season. Uh -huh. Shot one additional scene once all the other shooting had been finished and just threw it up at the end and then did a little slideshow telling you what happened to all these characters. But it's crazy to me that we stopped telling a Lakers story in 84. We, we, we need to have that show keep going. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. If you're an old school sports fan. I highly recommend it. It's, uh, you think what was it? The writer strike and the, the, uh, the strike is going on that ended it abruptly. You think I hear just not enough people watched it. Wow. Like, they just couldn't get a return on it, but it's so well done. I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay. It's worth checking out. I, I was on, on, on max the other day because I watched the, uh, the flash movie that, you know, that came out recently. So I watched that and, uh, but I did not, did not see the, uh, I scrolled through and I saw winning time. You know, you have to, if you go back and you think about some of the great years in basketball, whether you're a Lakers fan or a or Celtics fan, that was probably, to me, the greatest years of the NBA. Don't you think so? In the 80s? Yeah. yeah. Nothing like it. I think, I think social media has done damage to a lot of things. Really? Yeah, I do. Like, well, but just so many people are political now mm. and it's gone into sports. And again, regardless of what side you're on, I don't want to see, I don't want, if I'm watching the sports, I don't give a shit about your politics. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see who you support. I want to see you play a game. I want to escape from this bullshit. And it's just, it's just, it's been seeping into sports. And I think that's one of the reasons I, I'm not so hepped up on sports anymore. Well, I think you'll love winning time. Um, I just can't believe it's over. It was such a good show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hacksaw Sawyer that time, just <laughs> that elbow. He just jumped up in the air and fell down on his ass. <laughs> just, uh, I watched a little clip on uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, or was it YouTube? No, I think it was on Instagram the other day of the Rock selling the Stone Cold Stunner. Oh yeah, when he does the push up at the end. Yeah, the handstand. Yeah, <laughs> that's so freaking good. Oh God. I, um, I want to remind everybody, this is before Flair was really the man. Yeah. I know they're presenting him like a big deal here, man. He sold that atomic drop. Like I've never seen my favorite atomic drop sale of all time. Of course is Rick rude. Right. A heathen, but that's my second favorite right there. Yeah. Where they it was gyrating the hips. Terrible count from this referee too. Yeah. The referee can barely, barely get up. I, um, I was saying though, you know, when you. Really think about Flair's success. 
him winning the world title uh, from from Dusty in Kansas City in '81. Mm-hmm. At the time, I know that sounds like a big city, but in hindsight, Flair wasn't really over in Kansas City. Neither was Dusty. It was kind of a, a dead town based on anybody who worked there. They would say, oh, you never made any money there, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it wasn't like it was St. Louis or it was Tampa or it was Greensboro, whatever. And so it just doesn't feel like he was really successful with that run. And then, of course, when he wins it back from Harley uh, at Starcade 83, that's when the Ric Flair we know really I don't know. Came into his own. I mean, certainly he's, he's got the gift of gab down. He's got the presentation down with the robes and all that. He still looks like Ric Flair, but for some reason it just didn't hit yet. Sort of like, I guess you might say Roman reigns a few years ago and Roman reigns now, like, okay, he's got the belt, but fans aren't really with it. Now maybe they are right. You were watching. It was a part of your fandom. What do you think the difference in Flair's first run versus Flair's second run was TBS? The exposure he got there and the promos that he did on TBS, I think was what made Ric Flair. And that's why when I think about that, and I could be wrong, but when I think about that, that is one of my proudest things ever in wrestling, that I was I was there for that ride and that I held the microphone for Ric Flair through most of that. Yeah. Uh, because I, I grew up a again, a a mid-Atlantic championship wrestling fan. And I watched Ric Flair before his world title runs. I watched him as the U S champion, as a mid-Atlantic champion, as the television champion, as one half of the world tag team champions, the Greg Valentine, this was all before this version of Ric Flair. And that we're talking about in the seventies, late seventies. So I watched all, I watched Ric Flair was a big star in mid-Atlantic. And now as we move on and Ric Flair becomes the major star that he is, I was there for that. Yeah. That's, that's really special to me. Really, really special to me. And as we moved on in later life, now I know him for the knucklehead he really is. And that's even special for me as well. Yes. (laughs) Isn't it? There's three, there are three versions of Ric Flair in my life. There's the Ric Flair, my fandom, the Ric Flair held the microphone for, and the Ric Flair knucklehead that I know. It's just, it's something else. I never imagined being in Craigsville, Virginia and watching Midland Championship Wrestling that I would somehow be tied to Ric Flair. Yeah, it in is my wildest crazy dream. Crazy to think about. When yeah. I mean when you step back, you know, just as a fan and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. But I really think going back to your question, I think TBS had a big had a lot to do with Ric Flair's. Now I know he won the title in eighty three and TBS that came on like maybe a year later, a little bit late, more than a year later, let's say 14 months later, 15 months later in, in April of 85. And, and Flair had established himself as a great talker. Then of course there was mid Atlantic wrestling and there was, there's one of the falls. There was mid Atlantic wrestling and there was uh, worldwide wrestling that he cut his teeth on, so to speak as world champion. But it was, I'm saying it was TBS studios that elevated him. I mean, yeah, it's got to be right. Yeah, I mean, right. WTBS, dude. It was, yeah. It's hard to really underestimate or even put into words. Like, how can we convey what a big station that was? Yeah, I don't even really do. You know, they're uh, they're taking a little breather here. I think we will too. We'll run a timeout right now uh, because we want to remind you guys that. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but boy, there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or pop pop. Who's pretty crazy these days. We're talking about our sponsor fume. You see, they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Well, fume is an innovative award nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets 
for fidgeting, giving your finger something to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. And I got to tell you, my wife tried this and was blown away at how flavorful it is. She really enjoyed crisp mint. There's a bunch of different flavors you can try. White cranberry, maple pepper, uh, sparkling grapefruit, orange vanilla, raspberry lemon. There's something for everybody. But she thinks the crisp mint is uh, very fresh. She also tells me it's well weighted. It's perfectly balanced. It's fun to just play with in your hand. And it's also beautiful. It's made out of real wood. It's a cool shape. I don't know, man. It's a whole vibe. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. Switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over a hundred thousand customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. So join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today, head to tryfume.com and use our code WHW to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. Let's try fum.com and use the code WHW to save an additional 10% off your order today. Head right now to tryfume.com slash WHW. Use that code WHW to save an additional 10% off your order today. And Tony, we, uh, we're back. It looks like Ric Flair's got one fall up. Let's see what happens back on uh, Portland wrestling. Woo, well. A forerunner of the signs just walked through. I saw that. Yeah. 1982. First fall, I'll tell you, is something else. Why don't I move over to my interview position? And uh, I'll have a message for you. Can, I hope I can do this. Because we've got two live commercials coming what? up. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking to a couple guests here in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you that I got to give you the hard sell for Tom Peterson. Tom says, now you only got a couple 30 second messages, Frank. You got to really hit them with a hard sell. And our hard sell this weekend is have a very happy Easter, won't you? Tom Peterson going to close the store there at Southeast 82nd and Foster Road so that he and his family and all of his employees and their families can have a very happy Easter. So whatever you want to buy, It'll still be there on Monday. So take the opportunity to have a wonderful Easter Sunday, won't you? Tom says, Happy Easter. Wow. Now we're going to call Mr. Oh, I paid money for here, that, the so. track announcer, Keith, and a oh. friend of yours. Oh. What's happening in Speedway oh. tomorrow? Well, if you're a racing fan, ladies and gentlemen, Sandy Bar's Rose City Speedway has the Mighty Midgets tomorrow afternoon along sharing the program with the Mini Indies. And uh, as an Easter gift to the kids, Sandy Barr is going to allow all children under 13 to be admitted free, accompanied by an adult. I'd like to introduce one of our track sponsors, Frank Sinetti, Jr. I'm proud to be one of the sponsors out at Rose City Speedway. And remember, when you need painting, call me, Frank Sinetti, Jr., 281-8846. Thank you. Okay, that's the message. I'll have Sunday racing out there. Thank you very much, Keith. And we, I believe, are going to keep it right here. Oh. Okay, we will be right back to talk to the headaches after this timeout. Dude, what in the world is happening? <laughs> what just happened right there? This show, this show's a fucking mess, isn't it? And you could both win a brand new pickup and a thousand dollars cash and a trip for two to Hawaii for you. Enter two friends and double your chances of winning. Listen to 97 Country AM for complete details. Enter the telefriend contest as many times as you have friends. Then listen and win. 97 Country. Yes, in case oh, look who it is, man. It's Mr. Perfect. The Army certainly wow. has. Six years before he Kurt was perfect. hitting Larry the Axe Heading. Kurt, you've been taking it to the Army. Well, Frank, you know, all these people around here, I've been telling them for the last couple of weeks, they've seen what's happened. They've seen the Army. They've seen what they've done to me behind my back. I told them my father wanted to come in and be my partner, and here he is now. And he's here, and we're here to do something to the Army that they've never had done to themselves before. Well, you know, Kurt's been wrestling since he's been in sixth grade. We come from a long line of good wrestling families. And we try to wrestle right, and we try to wrestle according to the rules. And I was up in Minnesota sitting there 
bear hunting with a switch, and I get a phone call, and they said that these guys are trying to stampede over the Hennig. Doesn't make any difference who it is. If you do something to one Hennig, you do something to all the Hennigs. And what that means is war. And we've always been thick. I've got five children, and he's one of them, and he's one of the toughest. And we're here to take care of each other. And if whoever stands in our way, we're going to be hot, damn tough to put up with. Wow. I tell you, he backs up his words. Kurt, Larry, thank you very much. Once again, I want to repeat what Don Owen said when he introduced the match, that it is particularly at the request of the sponsors, Tom Peterson and Marv Tonkin, oh. that the World Championship match is coming to you on local television, something that hardly ever happens. So keep that in mind, won't you? We got the sponsors. We got the best ones you'll find anywhere. Here's one of them talking about Marv Tonkin Ford. Oh Ford. There's more ads on this show than wrestling. Yeah, no. Where your number one, Mark Thompson Ford. Where your number one at the number one family Ford store. We have the car just right for you. A special buy. Good mileage to come in and see us. That's Mark today, your number one. At the number one family Ford store. <laughs> 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 uh, Come in and see us uh, at Mars today, your number one. At the number one family Ford store. First six weeks I had this bike, it never left the garage. Couldn't afford the insurance. But now, all's well. Because my independent agent told me about how Dairyland Motorcycle Insurance gives good rates to good riders. Most folks can buy it by the month, too. Let's you ride when you want. Tony, well, how do you think these commercials Dairyland, stack up? I'd still be in that garage instead of here with my son. Ask uh, I like the Memphis ones a lot better. They're part of Century. And we haven't Century, seen a single furniture rail. No, not at all. Look who it is. Yeah. Coming back. How about that? Go take a break, kid. We got some. So we can cut the audio, but Flair's coming back in the ring. Yeah. I guess we took a break between falls to sell ads for sponsors. That actually yeah. kind of works out. It does work out. But when I'm watching this, I'm realizing why the WWF won. Yeah, uh, you take, if you're a, a and I, I've heard this before, I, I even think Melcher talked about this years ago. If you take this show, if you're a program director and you l look at this show and you look at what WWE was cranking out for superstars and challenge. Yeah. Now this, this may have been pre superstars and challenge, but there's no yeah, comparison to, yeah. Yeah. There was no comparison. These, these promoters did not know how to do a TV show. They knew how to do wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. Got to spend the money, man. You got to spend the money on production. WWE has proved that year in and year out. What do you, uh, what do you remember much, uh, if anything about Brett, you know, it feels like everybody talks about mad dog. Not a lot of people talk about his brother too much. I, I think I met him only once. Hmm. When they came back to the Crockett's and came in the uh, backstage area or into the garage and did a promo or two, I, I knew that Mad Dog was a terrible human being uh, on many levels, and he 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 always stunk and and oh yeah, he Mad always Dog. stunk, always stunk, always had terrible body odor in the back. Wow, and, and he always had cotton mouth and he was spit all over the microphone. He, he was just a, was a terrible hey, if person. He got cotton mouth, how was he spitting all over? Whatever, I just, his mouth was always really dry. I guess he was he's just a terrible human being. He really was to be around. Well, okay. Who else makes your list of worst? Worst to be around? Yeah. Wow, I have to think about that. 
Oh, come on. You hate a few Well, uh, no, no, I'm not a hater. I'm just, I, and I didn't hate Mad Dog. It, she was just terrible being around. Louis Spicoli was terrible being around because he was drugged out. Mm. I remember you uh, saying it was a sad one. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned Jay Youngblood was terrible to be around because he just was not a nice person. Yeah. Um, you were telling me before he was a real cocksucker, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Now, why, why, why did you hate him and why did he hate you and all that? I don't know. Just, I was a young kid that just started in the business, right? And he treated you like shit. And he treated me like shit. Yeah. And now, now the rest of them did. Um, you think he did it just because he could, because he's a piece of shit bully? I, I, I can't, I don't know. I can't answer that. I can't, an, I can't answer why he did things he did. I don't know. Um, it'd be unfair for me to do that. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else I didn't. <laughs> it'd be unfair for me to try to figure out why he was an asshole. Yeah, really. Uh, he was just an it asshole. Could have been. It could have been emotional problems when he was young. It could have been he had just uh, had marital problems when he was working with us. It could have been. It, it could have been on substances or alcohol, or he could just been. Some people are just assholes, right? They're yeah. Just ass. Yeah. So there. Look at that count. That count is so terrible by the referee. It's like one, two. Fuck me. This is a show where definitely the commercials are outshining the action, and it's not it's not any fault of Ric Flair's. Oh, look at that. The Flair flop in 82. How, how about that? Sold that. Dude, I didn't think he started doing that until like the late 80s. Right. But there it is in 82. See what he's doing here now. Oh boy. What happened there? It looked like he was getting ready to set up the figure four, but or maybe, maybe he got kicked telling in. that he got kicked in the no no. <laughs> I think he did get kicked in the nuts. I think so. Abdominal stretch flare trying to block it. Old school moves here, buddy. I, uh, over the weekend, you and I recorded not one, but two bonus episodes for the WHW Monday, Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Mm -hmm. I recorded the, uh, the Iron Man match with the rock and triple H. Uh, and then we uh, went ahead and recorded uh, one other piece of bonus stuff that, that we've never seen before. It was the shield against the Wyatt family. So you had Eric Rowan, Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt taking on the top three guys in the PWI 500 this year, Roman Reigns and John Moxley and Seth Rollins. Um, you'd never seen either one of those. No, it was, uh, it was probably, uh, pretty cool to see some early Brody Lee for you, right? Yeah, it really was. And as we'll, we'll talk about, by the way, those are, are posted Monday night. I don't know what time this is dropping, but those are being posted Monday night. I, um, uh, I heard you talk about how Arn Anderson said that Brody was really one of the, for the guy his size, one of the great workers. Yeah, man. Yeah. Really was. We, uh, for a guy his size, let me just tell you, Pond Water Dave, he goes hard in the paint when he leaves the house. <laughs> we had, uh, Pond Water Dave come hang out at the beach for what we called Summer Scam. Uh, we had duty trucking.com's on Jet Jewett. Yeah, I heard he was drunk the whole time, right? Every, well, he got um, face down, mm -hmm. butthole and balls in the air, naked, drunk, passed out before dinner mm -hmm. on night one. Okay. That was Thursday night. <laughs> for, before the weekend happened. Friday night, hey. Pondwater Dave got so far out of bounds, I don't know that we'll ever get him back. Wow. On Saturday... He was moping around trying to figure out how to put his life back together. Wow. It was in sh it's, he, his life's in shambles. It's falling apart. So send your love and your sympathy and your cards and letters. He needs all the support he can get as he tries to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Mm. Uh, you can find him uh, over on social media at ref super Dave PWD. Mm. Um, mm. yeah. Well, you know what? I would say you live and learn, but all of those guys have been living a long time and they apparently haven't learned. No, I think, uh, 
I think we have scared Pond Water Dave straight. I don't <laughs> think he'll leave the house again. I don't think he'll consume alcoholic beverages again. Uh, I don't think he'll be with uh, be allowed within 300 yards of me and Cassio ever again. Mm. Wow. Restraining order. That's pretty yep. serious. Yeah. That's pretty serious. I think he's just going to hope every Saturday or Sunday, he can just sit and watch football with his buddy, Blake and just chill out at home. Be like mm. a home body. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, I guess. Hey, so we do have uh, people watching along with us, um, but yeah, we have, shout out. yeah, we have no, uh, way to see them. Apparently their names, uh, no, I, I know who they are. It's coach Rosie. It's Josh Fields, Dylan Leahy. Hey, shout out to, uh, not Megan, Megan Nelson, right? Uh, coach Keith Morrison in the house. Bobby, yeah. as always is here. Appreciate Ken smack showing up or smock showing up. Alex Wheaton, Andrew Miller, shout out to Jim. And we got a, a lot of folks hanging out with us early on a Monday morning. Yep. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Megan Nelson knows all about Pond Water Dave. Oh, I bet she does. Yeah. Cause she, uh, put her blouse over his head one time. Hmm. Sorry, I, Megan, you did. I, uh, and we, we all saw it. Well, he's married. So yeah. Well, he, he was, he was uh one step away from being passed. He may have been passed out by, he that was time. passed out. Orange Cassidy took photos with him. Yeah. You, you heard me right. It's not like Pondwater went to orange Cassidy for a meet and greet. Orange Cassidy came to him. Yeah. Yeah. Orange looked at him and says, who is that drunk fucker? Yeah. Everybody yeah. did. Right. Well, there you go. You know, you know, the common denominator in all of this. What's that? When someone gets drunk or someone bad makes, things happen. Yeah. You makes a fool of themselves. You know, the common denominator is what it's you. Wait, now hang on now. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I was no, involved in any of that. No, it's like back in the eighties, the common denominator, all of us getting drunk was Ric Flair. And now here we go in 2023. It's you. Now that's not fair. Do you think I'm over here forcing people to do things they don't want to do? <laughs> oh my God. Brett just got a fall. Yeah. You see the crowd pop? Pretty damn big. Are we going to another commercial? Wins the second fall. Hacksaw Sawyer with a brilliant small package after he had successfully defended against the player. My goodness. Putting on the We're going to run down the towns here in just a moment. <laughs> Talk. Hey, just a second. Maybe a, uh, <laughs> run down to the towns for wrestling is remember. <laughs> All of these through until next Saturday, as far as I know, the heavyweight champion of the world is appearing, and on most of the cards, so is Jimmy Oppie, who is here for our first match tonight. So, some of the, uh, some of the action and where it's coming up all week long. Finley, Washington, up by the Tri-Cities area. Monday, Longview. Tuesday, here, a big card in Portland. Wednesday, a super shootout in Seattle. Thursday, there's a giant card down at Salem. <laughs> My God, let's take a time now, right now. now. Thursday, Thank you. Friday, Eugene, the fairgrounds. I mean, listen, Austin. I understand he's got to plug the live events, but it's time that we plug some holes in your life. And speaking of plugging holes, today's show is brought to you by Blue Chew. Guys, uh, Rick Flair's in the ring. And he very rarely wrestled on TV when he was the NWA champion. So getting to see him do that is, uh, like a sore Peter, man. It's hard to beat. And when you think of sore Peters, you think of Ric Flair and blue chew Viagra, Cialis and Levitra. That's right. It's the same ingredients that you'll find in blue chew, but this time in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost, who wants to spend a bunch of money to get a hard on? Don't you want affordable hard ons? 
we can hook you up to that. Here's the good part too. Take them anytime, day or night, to your plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And the process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com. You consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. Here's the best part. It's all done online. That means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. But there won't be anything discreet about your approach. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free and use our promo code WHW at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code WHW. Receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. And uh, we'll get back to the Portland show. We're running down the towns in uh, three, two, one, play. For one there, Rocky Johnson getting the shot. Next Saturday, we'll be back in Portland. And a week from tomorrow is Tacoma, Washington. Right now, we're going to take the moment to talk to the big match at South Salem High School. Sandy Barr, Rocky Johnson. Yes, uh, I understand that Rocky signed a contract two weeks ago to go in Eugene against the champion. So, you know, you won the Battle Royal in Salem last week, and uh, that gave you the, uh, the, the opportunity to wrap them there, right? Right. So you got two chances now. Do you want to take both of them or not? Well, why not, man? This is something I've been waiting for a long time. So I'll take him. I'll wrestle him in Salem, and maybe when I come to Eugene, I'll be the champion there. But I definitely will take him Thursday and Friday, too. Great. Okay, we can tell you this. It's going to be Rick Flair and Rocky Johnson Thursday and Friday. No doubt about it. Do we stay right here now, or do we go away, or do I do a my interview? <laughs> my God. <laughs> we are ready to talk to a man that it sounds to me. Here's Playboy Buddy Rose. To me like if you are given that match Tuesday, you're gone either way. No, if I win the title Tuesday night. I will defend the title in Seattle. I'll defend it in Salem. I'll defend it in Eugene. I'll make my home here. I'll still wrestle here. But when there's a title defense to go on, I will go out and defend the title, whatever city calls for it. Now, I have always won the big ones, right, Frank? Have I always won the big ones? Now, this is the biggest one of my career. I have been fighting all my life, and so has every wrestler in the NWA professional wrestling to become the best that professional wrestling has to offer. Rick Flair and Hack Sawyer are going at it right now. The winner of that match will face me Tuesday night in the Portland Sports Arena. Now, I am so sure I ran out Killer Brooks, I ran out Jimmy Stucker, I ran out Jesse Ventura, and I ran out the last but not least and the hardest one of all, Roddy Piper. But, Rick Flair. You and I both come from the same background. We both live the same lifestyles. We both make a lot of money. The difference is my 100,000 to your 250 to 500,000. Well, I'd rather make 250,000 to 500,000 a year. And the only way to do it is to beat the world's heavyweight champion. And I'm going to take that belt and I am going to win it Tuesday. And if I don't, I will leave the Northwest. One more quick thing. One more quick thing. Don Owens told me the only fair way to do it, he's going to put all the names in a hat, and at the end of the show, he's going to have a drawing to decide who will be the referee, and that's the fair way. I'm winning it. I'm not going to leave. If I lose, okay, I will leave. You're looking at the new world's is. heavyweight we'll champion. Right back after this from our talking. Okay, we don't have to hear another fucking Ford commercial. Yeah. Uh, $250,000 in 1982, Tony, is uh, 795 grand today. Wow. So, uh, if he, if he makes the half a million, he's proud to say is a uh, 1.59 in huh. today's money. So pretty big doll hairs back then. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, <clears throat> there's MJF scarf on the, it really on the tree. is yeah. Yeah. on the tree. Oh, he's always talking about Piper in Portland. You think huh. maybe that was his pappy right there? I mean, I yeah. know we've met the guy that they say is his dad, but I don't know that. For sure. Yeah. Uh, you never know. One thing I know, or actually two things I know, is number one, uh, wait a minute, is this Brett? 
Yeah, they're yeah. getting ready for the third fall. For some, had, for some reason, that, that looked like the honky tonk man walking in for a minute. Uh, well, two things to note. Uh, by the way, we saw Rocky Johnson and his son, uh, Dwayne Johnson, is ten years old here. I looked that up. Uh, and number two, with the exception of Flair in the ring, this show really sucks. The production leaves yeah. a lot to be desired. Right. But don't worry, boys and girls. We still got Dizzy Hogan on deck. <laughs> Makes me wonder how long this damn show is, though. Because if we're yeah. like watching Ric Flair wrestle for about an hour. Well, this is the final fall, and I wonder if Dizzy Hogan's going to wrestle or if he's going to do an interview. Mm, I don't Basically, know. I just really want to see Dizzy Hogan. Basically, we've we have we've had two matches. Stan Stasiak, who got disqualified, yep. and then Ric Flair. Rick is still doing some of his Ric Flair stuff, man. Ric Flair doing Ric Flair stuff is always funny. It always is. Do you see, um, that thing a few weeks ago, or I guess now it was several weeks ago with that lady on the plane yelling to the back, that motherfucker is not real. Did you see that? For some reason, uh, yeah. Well, they found her, right? And so I don't know if they're trying to recreate it, but over the weekend, there was a lady who was dressed in like a cat suit almost, like uh -huh. a, it was a, a skin tight onesie. Okay. And she got into some shouting match or telling people to shut the fuck up, bitch. And I'm Instagram famous, you fucking bum. And, it feels like we've had this happen a few times now, but the result yeah. is these people pop off on social media afterwards. So I'm wondering is one of the ways to quote unquote, get over in our society in 2023, should we have one of the, uh, divas, I guess they don't call them divas anymore. One of the lady wrestlers, do they just need to have a meltdown on an airplane and, and see if they can get it to go viral? I, I think. That's the way to get over for maybe two weeks and then the world forgets about you. Yeah. Because think of all the crazy stuff. I mean, how about the guy who shit himself on the plane? Uh, oh, that was a lady. Oh, it was that a lady shit Oh, that, that was a lady who shit on the plane. Oh, God. I shit was all over the plane. Wow. And like, I almost call bullshit on that because we've heard for years and years that Yoko used to have to shit on the plane. <laughs> like he couldn't fit in the toilet. Right. So he would, they'd put up some newspapers and he'd just pop a squat right there and just shit on the plane on the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess the deal here is though, it was just shitting directly onto the carpet. I mean, you're right, right, right. Well, if you uh, were going to take a shit on a plane, would you want to take it in first class or coach? I want to take it in first class, but I would not shit on a plane. Have you ever shit on a plane? No, I've never shit on a plane either. No, I, I, again, I only shit two places. Home and the hotel the hotel room. Yeah. Uh, you've never shit at the, uh, arena. At, not in wrestling. No, come on now. Nope. All the years of Crockett, all the years of never, WCW, never all shit, the years nope. of eight. Nope. You're a liar. No, I'm not a liar. You definitely have shit. If you're, you're, if you're watching, if you're watching dynamite this week, look at it and think to your, in, to yourself, Shivani may have to shit, but he ain't going to go. Didn't go during the day. You're a morning shitter, right? Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a night shitter. I guess my question is if you're a night shitter and you're working these shows all night long, I mean, you just told us before we got going or before we clicked record today that, uh, that you had diarrhea at a show recently. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I held on to it until. But I knew it was there. Did Flair just win it? Yeah, he did. There it is. No big pop, but I guess they wanted the hometown boy to know. Hey, Bryant wants to know, uh, did Tony ever work with Playboy Buddy Rose? Does he have any good Playboy Buddy Rose stories? Never remember Buddy Rose at all. He may have done, I don't know, may, he may have done something in, in WCW for a short period of time. He did WWF for a while when you were there, okay. I think. Okay. Did you, see, you ever see the blow away diet? The blow away diet? <laughs> no. Yeah. I'll have Silva see if he can get that together so we can watch that at the end. Okay. 
Josh Fields wants to know, has Tony ever had a night where he swore he'd never drink again? And can Tony give us one of his worst hangover stories? Yeah, I remember that time I, I was with the baseball team. This wasn't even wrestling. This, uh, this was 1984. And I say that because I remember where we were living, and that's where Lois was pregnant with Laurie. I was out with the baseball team, uh, the front office, Francis Crockett, uh, a guy named Andy Kaplan who worked in the front office. We had two other guys I can't remember. We all went out to eat. She took us all out to eat, and we got drinking, and I came home, and Lois let me in, and I was drunk, and I stumbled upstairs, and Lois said, God, you're drunk. And she opened the bathroom, and I fell into the bathtub oh. and puked all in the bathtub. All That's over the not time deal. Yeah. And just was, I was miserable that next day. So that's the one I remember more than any, but, but, but overall, I've not really been a big drinker as most people. I haven't ever since I started this diet, I've not drunk at all. So, uh, and sometimes I will have, maybe I'll have like a, a Bailey's oh. and, co and coffee, or I don't know, maybe at times a glass of champagne. Oh, oh, here comes Flair. Okay. We got to listen to this. Holding that title, Rick Flair. Let me make one thing very clear. Everywhere I travel on the world, they say, Rick Flair, if you want to be the total world champion, you better go into the great Northwest and wrestle for Don Owens. He's one of the big time wrestling promoters of all time, one of the big men in the National Wrestling Alliance. And I made it a point to make sure that I came out in this area so that everybody that's heard, dreamed, and prayed for now has got a chance to see what a real live world champion looks like. Now they all know that I was born with that golden spoon, that I wear the finest clothes, drive the biggest cars, and date the most beautiful women in the world. Not only because I'm Ric Flair, the man, but because I'm the world champion, the greatest athlete alive. And I came here because of guys like Rose and Oliver and Bourne, Hacksaw Reed, Buzz Johnson, Hacksaw Sawyer, excuse me, Rocky Johnson, <laughs> all the big names, Kurt Henning, another youngster, trying to make a big name for himself out here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one way to make a big name for yourself is to get in the ring with Ric Flair. I'm the man, I'm the world champion, and I don't care who it is, where it is, any time, you get in the ring with Ric Flair, and we'll find out what you're really made out of. You understand? Woo! Nature boy, Ric Flair, the heavyweight champion of the world. And that will continue to be as he, that will be uh, the case until tomorrow when he defends it again. It's one thing about being the champion when you're on top many, many times, as it's been said. It is a lot easier to get to the top than it is to stay on top. And it can't So what do you think of this uh, announcer and the job he's doing? Is this more of a, I mean, well, certainly he's had some challenges here. Is that how much is on him and, and, and how much is really on the support that he's got production wise? Oh yeah. It, it's a combo thing. It really is. I mean, he's, he is, he has to turn on his own microphone and turn it off. As you can see, they can't even have a microphone that's uh, piped to the house because what they do, they got two microphones taped together. Right. Uh, and, uh, he's taught, they're talking to him and yeah, it, it's a combination of things he's having trouble walking and talking at the same time going between the stand up and the sit down there as he's trying to talk and he's stringing it out but he's what they got man he's all they have what i mean yeah. what do you think of the one man booth i mean you know these days on aw we see the 17 man booth Mm -hmm. I know uh, some promotions use a three-man booth. I know JR and the King were a two-man booth. You did three in Nitro. You did two in WCW, yeah. 17 these days for AEW. But the solo booth, 
We saw that with Gordon once before. We saw it with Joey Styles. Yeah. I mean, would that be a challenge for you? Would it, it feels like it would be harder to do it by yourself? It would be all. It would be uh, wouldn't be impossible, but it would be absolutely. Uh, do you recognize stupid. who that is? It looked like Jesse Ventura at first. That's but, Dizzy Hogan. That's Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Wait a minute, in the red shirt. Yeah, not the black guy. How do you do? You realize he had a black guy. That's that's, that's Br- Man King Parsons. <laughs> okay, that's Dizzy Hogan. The idea that you looked at King Iceman King Parsons goes, "That's Brutus <laughs> Man." He fucking yeah. changed. He changed oh. a lot, man. Holy <laughs> shit! Let's track it here. Okay. This runner, two hundred and forty pounds from Houston, Texas, King Parsons. The unpredictable Dizzy Hogan doing some posing. <laughs> we can cut it now, but my uh, good, dude, how about he's got the Andre singlet on. This is a totally different guy than who we've seen before, is it not? Yeah, doing some posing and had the red and the gold colors, huh? Yep. Dude, I don't know why that tickled me, but it did. <laughs> so as a reminder, you might yes. be wondering, how does this happen? Well, when Hulk Hogan first gets going back in yeah. the late 70s, he calls himself Terry Boulder. Okay. And Ed Leslie here, the real life Brutus Beefcake, would call himself Ed Boulder. Okay. Later, when uh, Mr. Balea became Hulk Hogan, uh huh. He still wanted to claim he was related, so he becomes Dizzy Hogan. Wow. Yeah. I I did I didn't realize I didn't realize this. You didn't that, know he was Dizzy Hogan? No, I didn't realize that he was even uh bolder or whatever. Yeah. Boy, he they just stayed together down here in Alabama as the Boulder brothers. Wow. Yeah. So they they were they'd been close for a long, 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 long time. I think it was uh late seventy nine when he became Hulk Hogan. And of course, uh by the early eighties they were off to the races and right. Meanwhile, here's Dizzy Hogan. God, I miss the eighties. Dude, I do too. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm 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 fairly grown, fairly well adjusted. Yeah. Human being, I'd like to think, but in my head, we definitely would have had time travel by now. Like when I was a kid, if you told me you'll be 42 and there won't be flying cars and no time travel, I'd have been like, Phew. yeah, right. You don't know. <laughs> it's definitely time travel. Yeah. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, instead of, uh, uh, I've heard this said before, it said much better than I'm about to say it. Instead of working on time travel, we just made sure that we could text. Yeah. And that with Instagram. Well, here's the thing. There were other advances in technology like AG one, you know, that's something that we didn't used to have, but we do now. It looks like old Dizzy Hogan. He probably needs a little AG one here. Started every day. Yeah, seriously. Start every day with one scoop of AG one. That's all it takes in a cup of water. And you're going to cover all of your nutritional bases. It's going to deliver you comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. It replaces your multivitamin and your probiotic and everything else in one simple drinkable habit. It's a science driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients that really have raised the standard for quality in the supplement category. And you set yourself up for success. Seriously. It's going to give you all the key daily nutrients you need. 75 different high quality ingredients here all included in one one delicious scoop of ag1 my wife does it every morning on the way to the gym she can tell the difference on the off chance she misses a day maybe she overslept and she's hustling out the door and she forgets she says she's not as productive she can feel it i can feel the difference when i miss a day too especially in the afternoon i used to have that afternoon crash like my brain was mushed i couldn't really just focus and get things done 
This is not just for energy. It's for energy and strength and focus and clarity. Oh my, seriously, it's going to improve the way you feel and make you more productive. Think of it as a micro habit with macro benefits. And if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to drinkag1.com slash WHW. That's drinkag1.com slash WHW. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. And uh, we're home stretching it here. Three, two, one, play. We see uh, Dizzy Hogan doing his thing. And up next, we've got uh, that's Iceman King Parsons in there with him. Rocky Johnson and Chung Lee still to come, I believe. And then a Ric Flair Buddy Rose interview to take us home, trying to sell some tickets. They've done not one, but two hard sales on the tickets where they run through the entire calendar. But I mean, every single guy who comes up is talking about, well, on this day and on that day. And I mean, you can definitely tell the, this is the infomercial era of professional wrestling. Yeah. And if they didn't even have a, uh, a video font. They, they had a, like a, a sandwich board where they put a, yes, <laughs> put the names up and someone even stuck the sign out in front of it. It was like, God almighty. I love seeing them just hold up a picture of, Hey, this guy's coming in. Yeah. It's Dr. D that's what he calls himself. Gotta assume that means destruction. I guess we'll find out when David Schultz gets here. Well, you know what, that, uh, let me speak on that for a second. That was a, that those things were a big deal. Now back in the mid Atlantic area era, when I was watching Bob Cottle would say fans coming up soon to mid Atlantic championship wrestling, Baron Von Raschke, you won't want to miss that. And when he would say that, that would, we would go. Holy shit. We only saw Baron Von Raschke in, in the Bill Actor magazines. Yeah. 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 So, and, and just by Bob mentioning it, it was a big deal. So I'm sure just showing the pictures even led more credence to that back then. Yeah, it was, it was a big deal. I like holding up the photo. Yeah, I do too. You know? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Couldn't take a camera shot of it <laughs> by itself. A close no. up, just hold it up. There you go. Got it. Thank you. Move on. It's weird how much technology has changed too, because these days, you know, it's all co connected to a computer and it's crazy yeah. as the sounds. There's probably not a computer in the zip code here. No, shoot. No, nobody's using a computer. No. Editing had big edit bays that connected to a master control with reel to reel tape machines. And now it's just computers and drives, hard drives. Right. And removable hard drives. The cameras, that's what we do. I mean, we shoot something in the camera, they pull out the drive and run it to the truck. Just It's just amazing. Technology is amazing. And who knows, Conrad, maybe one day there will be flying cars. <laughs> I fucking doubt it. Yeah. Uh, Hey, Although, we, uh, I, I can tell you this, the Uber next door sounds like a spaceship. You ever listen to an Uber startup? It no. sounds like a flying saucer from plan nine from outer space. It does. It's the craziest sound in the world. Wait, what are you saying? Uber. Uh, did I say Uber? I'm, yeah, I'm, you at, did. I'm like, that's uh, a car, Tony. Like it's a uh, Nissan uh, or a Toyota. Tesla. Oh yeah. 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 I've heard one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, God, I'm mighty. Uh, coach Rosie wants to know, yeah. Which of the companies that had commercials on today's Portland show, would you be a spokesman for? That's a good one. I'd love to see you on those Ford commercials getting smashed with eggs. Yeah, that would be, that'd be good. I think I'd do a good job on, uh, on the Jacobson mower. Uh, Bryant wants to know what made Ric Flair more memorable in each town, the matches or the partying after the matches? Well, it would be the matches because I didn't go with him for each, for each town. So. For me, it would be the matches. And not only that, to me, what made it memorable was how Ric Flair was when he was wrestling in a match, how he could make people look so good. And everybody would say, <clears throat> you know what? Uh, Flair does the same thing every time. There's some moves he did, but there's a lot of shit that Flair did that would play into the strengths of his opponent to make his opponent look good. So that's what made Ric Flair memorable to me. Uh, here's a fun one from uh, Alex. He wants to know, are there any other territories you would have liked to have worked for? So we've seen Memphis on here. 
I know you've seen some mid South before we've watched a little Florida before now we're watching Portland. Is there one, whether it's world-class or the AWA, there's so many different ones. Was there another territory you would have enjoyed? Yeah, I think, uh, and this is the, I'll give you a crazy reason, but I think I would have enjoyed working for the WWF back then only because they taped in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Right. And that's, yep. re- that's real close to where my father was from. And I'm very familiar with that area. I always thought that had been cool to be up there and do that. Here's one from, uh, Josh Fields. He yep. says, Hey, it was Taz appreciation night in Cincinnati. How was that? <laughs> that was, uh, a lot of orange out here, brother. That was a little rib that we played on Taz. Um, Justin, uh, before we had, like we said, and we still like 10 minutes to go before the show. <clears throat> And Justin Roberts can hear us talk and we, and nobody else can, you know, so we're talking to Justin Roberts and he always says he'll introduce Taz Excalibur than me. And, uh, Excalibur, I think it once said, Oh, by the way, Justin, it's Taz appreciation night. Let's have a, let's have another round of applause for him. And so Justin played right into it and we did it like three or four times. And Justin even did it between shows or between matches one time. I love it. Which was tremendous. And I would stand up and I would clap. I would do like this. And then I would still, everybody, everybody would still be sitting down. I'd still be standing up and clapping like this. We just really made a big deal out of it. So it ended up being very, very funny for us. Dude, that's so awesome. Yeah. How did he react to that? How he liked it. He was just laughing. He, he really was. He was, you never know what mood you're going to catch Taz in. It's right. either it's either uh, a terrible mood, a not so bad mood, or a horrible mood. Uh, but that was pretty good mood. He was in a pretty good mood for that. I don't know what happened here, but the match is over, and the fans are waving to the camera. Look, <laughs> everybody's trying to get on TV. <laughs> right. There's a couple signs too in 1990. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. What a crowd. I'll tell you, it's a great one. Wrestling has been super. And I don't, I, a challenge by Rose, I'll tell you. I've seen so many times where he's used something about, well, I didn't get beat. It went to a draw or something. But he, the way he has stated this, I don't know. Well, you might. Well, I won't say anything. Hey, <laughs> Rose. <laughs> <laughs> thinking uh, you're only I believe you're only paid to dude he feels that flair is not very tough i believe that he is underestimating rick flair well we'll be seeing won't we in a few days all right tonight, he's just filibustering let me remind everybody that tonight as you're listening to this is aew grand slam tickets are on sale now and there are Really great opportunities, uh, really affordable tickets. There are certain sections that are buy one, get one free. So if you've always wanted to see wrestling in that arena, so of course this is only the third time it's ever happened at Arthur Ashe Stadium, this is your most affordable chance yet. Pick up tickets now, AEWTIX. It is a pay-per-view quality card. We'll have not only a fantastic two-hour episode of uh, Dynamite tonight, but a two-hour Grand Slam for Rampage as well. It's a who's who, man. And of all the matches, I think I might be most excited uh, for Claudio and Kingston. Mm. I mean, that's a story that feels like it's 20 years in the making. Of course, we got MJF and Samoa Joe, uh, the Young Bucks in action there. I mean, it's a who's who what you guys are putting together here for Arthur Ashe. And it's happening tonight. Be sure to check it out on TBS. And, of course, uh, Rampage this Friday night. Arthur Ashe, dude, four hours. It's going to be a big show. Yeah, I... um... Eddie's Eddie's done a great job of selling this uh, match and this night, and I really hope that Samoa Joe just drives MJF in the ground like a tomato post. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, you know, I want to ask, um, what did you think of the math promo from MJF? I'm going to talk about current stuff, but man, that got me so hyped when I was watching that this past week. That was really, really cool. That was cool. That that shows you how MJF is really a student of the game, so to speak. 
And when he did it and they played it for the house, the house popped big time. Good. Some of the fans were like right into it. So I, I really enjoyed it. It was very well done. This, uh, the, the match continues. we got Rocky Johnson here. Uh, just absolutely wearing it out. Yes, he is. Maybe he, that's one, two, three. Maybe he realized, look at that. He realized that the, the, sh the show is slow. So he needs to looks good too. Doesn't he? Wow. Yep. Wonder if his 10 year old uh, son is in the, in the, in the stance. I, he lived out here too, didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Chung Lee. What's your favorite Chung Lee match? Was that it? Wow. I don't remember Chung Lee. That kind of looks like the, the, uh, Kabuki without his makeup, the long hair, he can't see the face and he's very upset though. So now I guess we're going to end with flair and buddy Rose. I think there's going to be a promo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Let's check it. This week, the heavyweight champion of the world work flair. Many say maybe the best that ever held that global title. Time will tell. The next few days will give us some indication because he's going up against some tough competition. He's getting some real challenges here in the Northwest. We'll be right back. We'll have an interview and wrap up the show. But first, we're going to hear from Mal Tockett from Marv. Oh, okay. Ford. <laughs> well, all right, we don't need another Mark Ford. Ford we get the idea. Coach Keith wants to know, did Tony watch any other territories during his JCP day? So you acknowledge that you picked up the after mags and that's how you'd hear about guys. Yeah. But did you, were you ever able to check out somehow wrestling from another territory? Did it come on your TV? Did you visit a friend or family member who got something else? I remember being up in Pennsylvania and watching the WWF. We always okay. spent time up in Pennsylvania. So I remember watching some of that. That was all. Didn't get to watch anything else because, you know, it was syndic uh, it was just territorial back then, right? Right. You had to be at it. Like you said, you had to be somewhere else to watch it. Um, but I do remember watching the WWF stuff. Uh, it was pretty cool. Do you remember having favorites from the WWF programming you watched as a, as a young person? <sighs> yeah, I, I distinctly remember the Zabisco... Uh, and I guess I was up there for that. The Zabisco, uh, San Martino, thing? San Martino. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's track the flick the finish. on the line. And especially next Tuesday here against buddy Rose, Rick Flair. Well, they tell me that buddy Rose is a real big deal in this part of the country. He's a real man, not, not real popular with the people, but a real hometown man. A little country like most of the people around here, so basically they understand him. Now, he had the nerve to get in the ring a little while ago with the world champion and tell everybody here, and let's face it, he wasn't talking to Hacksaw Sawyer, he was talking to me. He told me that if he didn't beat me for this 10 pounds of gold, that he was going to pack his bags and go. You better learn something right away, my friend. This is my interview time. And if you don't want to pack your bags tonight, you'll stand behind Mr. Owen. If you remember, I want my own referee. Don Owen said, the only fair way if you'll give me this match is we'll pull it out of a hat. Bottom up, you pull. All eight wrestlers put their name in the hat. You pull out the name and that man will be the referee of the match. And then, Flair, you're going to lose your title. Just a minute. Uh, the only reason why I'm going to go for this is because you volunteered to leave in case you don't win the world championship. Who's the referee? Kurt Hennig is the referee. Hey, I told you a minute ago to you it's Mr. Flair. And brother, 
These people don't know a lot about me. They know I make a lot of money, and I'll bring you a first-class ticket on any airline you want Tuesday night. Understand that? Everything is on the line Tuesday night. If I don't win, I'll leave. But I'll tell you what, that's how sure I am. You people, Tuesday night, will witness the World's Heavyweight Championship change hands. Flair, we started together and we'll end it together. But you're going to leave without that belt and I'm going to defend it from here on out after Tuesday night. This is the ultimate. I'm not going to quit. The biggest match in my six years here, and you people will see me win that title. And I promise you that will happen. Well, I just promise you that something's going to happen, and it'll be history in the making. Frank Bottom of bidding you. Good night, everybody. Man, that was a fun finish. They closed it strong. They set up a big match. They yeah. got the uh, the heel going off at the end. I really enjoyed it. Hope you guys did too. Of course, you get all these shows early and ad free when you join us over at adfreeshows.com or, of course, the WHW Monday Patreon. And uh, Tony, I never know what to expect when we sit down and watch these old shows together, but watching old wrestling together sure is fun. It's one thing to hear it, it's another to see it. If you haven't already, go hit the subscribe button on our YouTube. It's whw on youtube.com. How easy is that? Whw on youtube.com. Also got a lot of new shirts and swag. I don't know if you saw, but at the uh, Impact 1000 episode, there was a shirt right in the front row or a couple rows back that said Lowest Rules. Mm. Uh, and we've got all those shirts and a lot more over at lowestrules.com. Seriously, some super funny and stupid stuff are available for you now over at lowestrules.com. By the way, we would love to talk about your product or service here on the program. It doesn't get any easier than going to advertise with whw.com and would love to have your social interaction on the show as well. Make some requests. Uh, I enjoyed watching this old school stuff. Maybe we'll watch something else similar to this next week, but we want to hear from you. What do you want to see? Tweet at us at whw Monday, or you can throw us an IG message at whw podcast. And uh, as I said, find us all over YouTube at whw on youtube.com. Tony, it's always a blast watching old wrestling with you. Today was no different, but right now, unfortunately, it looks like it's about that time. And just like studio wrestling back in the territory days, we are out of time. We will see you next week on what happened when on Wednesdays, we come to you on Westwood one, but Mondays exclusively ad free on Put your own patreon.com forward slash WW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. We had a blast at StarCast 6. A huge thank you to everyone who attended. And if you want to relive our stage show experience, you can with Premier Streaming Network. Over 20 stage shows took place StarCast weekend. From comedy shows, design panels, musical performances, talk shows, and more including a live edition of AEW Unrestricted with CEO Tony Khan. Sign up for Premier Streaming Network today and check out the shows available now on demand and in HD. And if you sign up today, you'll get two months free of Premier Plus. Enjoy the amazing lineup of content that Premier Streaming Network offers, including all five previous StarCast stage show lineups. Hundreds of hours of fantastic wrestling content at your fingertips. Visit StarCastOnPremiere.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like Title Chase, Eric Fires Back, Conversations with Conrad, and The Insiders. Plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early? You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. 
Plus Ride Shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch-alongs, Q&As, and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today, and hey, when you do, the first week is completely free at freeshows.com.